Hello everyone, back to today's first video, doing the February month head forecast for uh, today's first video. Um, we're going to have a look at the CFS V2 and also the Beijing Climate Centre long range season models, see what they're showing for February 2018. And then uh, we'll see whether uh, I agree with that and I'll issue the gasweathers.com February 2018 forecast. We'll also have a recap on January and see how the January forecast fed. And at the very end of the video, we'll have a sneak peek at the first month of the spring. We'll have a sneak peek at uh, March. Just to say, uh, later on today, we've got weekend forecast coming up. As always, on a Saturday, we're going to have a detailed look at the weather for the week ahead. And then there may be another video coming up late this afternoon or this seeding, possibly Snowwatch. Have to wait and see. There'll be more about that uh, when we do the weekend forecast. But kicking it all off is the February month head forecast. And we're going to begin, as I say, by having a recap on January. So we've got the um, climate averages in now uh, at the UK Met Office uh, for January 2018. Now, the gasworthies.com uh, January 2018 forecast was for generally close to average temperatures we thought that there'd be mild spells but also cold spells are setting one another we said there was a low risk of maybe bedding in a scandinavian high and having a really cold easterly outbreak but that was more of a a risk rather than a probability and the forecast actually was for quite an unsettled stormy month but also quite cold at times as those vigorous areas of low pressure and storms pulling cold uh, winds from the north. So we expected quite a wet month, but also quite a stormy month. We expected quite a lot of snow, especially for northern parts of the country, and temperatures to be around average with sub substantial cold, but also mild spells offsetting one another. This is how things actually turned out. So this is the January 2018 mean temperature anomaly set against 61 to 1990. See what happened uh, if we set it against our old and cold temperature average. Remember, 61 to 1990 is a very cold temperature average because it encompasses the really cold decade of the 1960s. So many parts of England and Wales come out with uh, really quite a mild month um, in January 2018. We came out with an anomaly of around one degree or more above average for the bulk of England and Wales. It was a little bit closer to average to northern England and North Wales. There we have um, anomalies of around half a degree to one degree above average. And actually for Scotland and Northern Ireland, there wasn't really a deviation at all. It was close to average uh, there. So the further north you went, uh, the cooler it became. If we set it against 81 to 2010, the more modern and warmer temperature average, actually parts of Scotland come out with a colder than average month, especially northern, northeastern Scotland, where our anomaly is going down to around one degree or more below average. So quite a cool month, quite a cold month for uh, northern Scotland. Coming further south, it gets progressively warmer. So for England and Wales, set against 81 to 2010, the uh, January 2018 temperature normally comes out around half a degree to one degree above average. But whether it's 61 to 90 or 81 to 10, you can see the same story holds true that uh, the further north you go, the colder it is. The further south you go, the warmer it becomes. The uh, precipitation anomaly, the rainfall anomaly for January, January 2018 looks like that. So it was a relatively dry month for eastern parts of Scotland, but for southwestern Scotland, Northern Ireland, northwest England and Wales, uh, it was actually wetter than an average month. That very much tells us that it was quite an Atlantic-driven month with a lot of westerly winds bringing vigorous rain bands and they're particularly affecting western parts of the country. The bulk of uh, the country actually comes out just with average precipitation. So not a big deviation for the majority of the country in January 2018. And that's true if we set it against either uh, 61 to 19 or 81 to 2010. Now, I think we have to uh, say that the Gaussweathers.com January 2018 forecast was a little bit of a bust because it was certainly a warmer month for England and Wales anyway, a milder month than uh, we expected. For Northern Britain, actually, it was more what we expected. We did get those cold northerly winds being pulled in fairly regu regularly around these vigorous areas of low pressure. So for Scotland, possibly the January forecast in Gaussweathers.com was better. But for the rest of us, I think we have to say we over 
Uh, we underestimated the temperatures, really. The temperatures were milder than we expected. Um, it was an unsettled month, but not particularly wet, except in those uh, western regions exposed to those Atlantic winds. We did get the stormy nature of the, lump, of the month, right? There were several uh, episodes of gale or severe gale force winds. And at times, we did pull down cold air quite a long way south. We never got it really far into the far south. But certainly, Wales and Midlands did get some colder interludes at times. Northern England, Northern Ireland, Scotland did have uh, several uh, outbreaks of cold and snowy weather. So I'll let you make your own um, decision. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a complete write off of the forecast, but it certainly wasn't one of our better uh, month head forecasts. So we'll go on and have a look at uh, February then. So this is the 700 millibar height anomaly from the CFS V2 for, <coughs> excuse me, for February. Uh, 2018. What we find, quite a complicated looking pattern. We've got a ridge through the central part of the Atlantic. We've got quite a deep trough of below average heights across many sort of central and western, southwestern parts of Europe. And then it looks like we've got quite a big blocking feature up to the northeast. So if you come over here, you can see Scandinavia rather better. We've got all these red colours up there. So this blocking feature is trying to bring in the winds from the east. That's the first thing to say. We're also trying to bring in a westerly wind from the Atlantic, but that's diving southwards through this trough so it is a very complicated uh, pattern but overall particularly for western Europe that looks quite cold and quite unsettled because the main thing and the main thing for us is that uh, the flow is going like that so we are placed on the cold side of the jet stream uh, with this trough here across central and western and southwestern parts of uh, Europe so that does look really like it could be a fairly cold month actually coming up. What about the temperature uh, anomaly? So, sorry, that's wrong. So, we go through the temperature anomaly, and there it is. That is the temperature anomaly that the CFS V2 is predicting now for February 2018. It's a big turnaround of what this model was showing just a few days ago because now it is going for a colder than average month across many western parts of Europe and the British Isles and Ireland is included in that as well. It's seen the warmth uh, to be down in the southeast of Europe. So CFS is going for a colder than average February uh, in 2018. There's an idea that this model never shows cold conditions. I have to say, it does have to be dragged, kicking and screaming to cold conditions very often. Uh, and that's been the case this time. Um, but the model does sometimes show colder than average uh, temperatures. And this is one of those occasions where it is doing that, albeit it has had to be really dragged to um, do that. This would be precipitation anomaly uh, for February. And you'll see it's coming out with a very substantially drier than average month across northern Europe. That's because it's cold, essentially. When it's cold, the air holds less moisture uh, the uh, warm air, so when it's cold, very often it will be dry, but keep in mind, uh, any precipitation that does fall when it's cold is going to be falling as snow, and you only need a little bit of snow, a little bit of precipitation to uh, cause havoc, especially so in the UK. So a cold of an average month being predicted by CFS V2, what about the Bayesian Climate Centre? This would be 500 millibar height anomaly from the Bayesian Climate Centre for uh, February 2018. I'm not doing the 10-day breakdowns uh, this time because I'm not sure they're all that reliable. So let's just concentrate on the monthly anomalies for these month head forecasts of the next few month head forecast and see how we do. So, um, again, it looks like we've got pretty uh, good agreement here between the two models uh, that uh, we've got this trough. I have to change the colour. We've got this trough centering close to the UK and also across central parts of Europe as well. It's also seeing somewhat of a blocking feature to be up to the north. But unlike the CFS, the block is actually being centred uh, close towards Iceland and Greenland. And we've also got a bit of a block through the central Atlantic. The upshot is that we will be bringing cold air into this trough. So this does look like another potentially quite cold uh, month ahead uh, with Beijing Climate Centre. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly for February. And there we are. It's going for a colder 
than average month for uh, the UK and for Ireland too. Let's just get rid of that and do it again. We're going for a colder than average month. UK and Ireland. Also, many parts of Europe are coming out with a cold and average month as well. Does have the core of that cold over in the east of Europe. Uh, quite interesting. But really, all parts of Europe have been predicted to have a colder than average month. And the British Isles is included in that as well. So we've got both of our models here going for colder than average uh, temperature anomalies for February uh, 2018. Precipitation-wise, uh, the Beijing Climate Centre is looking like that for the uh, UK. Bit of an east-west split. So northern and eastern parts of the country coming out with dry than average month. Some of the western parts um, coming out with a slightly a wetter than average month. Notice very dry signal for Scandinavia. That's indicative of high pressure being up there. And that high pressure, let's get rid of those again. So we've got the high pressure over Scandinavia. And it also wants to extend that out towards Greenland and Iceland as well. So actually going for quite a big block to be up to the north in those sort of areas. And so I think it's going for quite a lot of easterly um, influences here uh, with the uh, Beijing Climate Centre. So bring cold air out of uh, Eastern Europe flooding across the continental landmass. The jet stream is going to our south, so that's why it's wet and average across southern Europe because the jet stream is down there. And uh, we're getting some of that energy at times, so it does mean that it could be quite snowy actually on the Beijing Climate Centre scenario for southern and western parts of the country and a drier scenario for northern and east parts of the country. But quite a wintry month is being seen there by uh, Beijing Climate Centre, more so I think than the CFSB2. But CFSB2 is cold as well. So we've got both of our models in agreement for a colder than average uh, month ahead in February. But the question is, do we agree with this? Now, we've got problems because we overestimated the temperature in January. Um, I mean, we underestimated the temperature in January. The temperature actually uh, came out above what we expected. So we've got to be careful that we don't go too cold uh, with this. So um, I don't think it's going to be quite as cold as the Beijing Climate Centre is indicating. The CFS might be closer. I'm going to go for a slightly colder than average February. But I think we'll still have periods of westerly winds overall so i don't expect we may get a very cold month and this was always showing up in the in the um winter forecast but there is the potential for a very cold um period of weather potentially even a severe period of weather we did say that when we did the winter forecast but it's a low risk and it's not expected at any point through this winter if you see what i mean so that's why i'm not going to go for a very significantly cold average month but i do think we probably will get our coldest month of the winter i think we'll probably get a slightly colder than average month at the very least some areas could be significantly cold that will be most likely in northern parts of the country. I suspect quite a dry month coming up as well, a little bit drier than average, but at the same time, I think we'll have a greater um, sort of uh, greater uh, periods of snow compared to average. So it could be quite a wintry month at times. And again, that's more particularly for northern and eastern parts of the country, I would have thought. Uh, so a relatively cold February is the gas uh, February 2018 forecast. A low risk that it could be very cold or severely cold, but not really expected. I think we'll continue to have periods of Atlantic-driven weather that will offset these colder interludes. My guess is that we'll have a cold first week to 10 days. We'll probably get a period of milder weather through the middle part of the month. And then we may go perhaps into the coldest spell of the winter late in the month. Um, and that one, uh, after potentially a sudden stratospheric warming in the middle of the month, around our milder interlude, because when you get a sudden stratospheric warming, it tends to turn milder um, briefly. So uh, after that sudden stratospheric warming, we may get our coldest spell of both February and of the winter, and it may happen late on in the month. And that, if there is going to be a severe spell of weather, I suspect it'll be in the final week to 10 days of February, when it could get uh, quite nasty. 
depending exactly how that sudden stratospheric warming plays out, where the blocking sets up. But again, I have to emphasize, we are not forecasting uh, severe cold weather. Uh, just if it's going to happen, if it is a risk, and if it happens, I think it'll be late uh, in the month. So quite an interesting February. Expect a lot of chopping and changing day by day. Again, similar to what we had in January, but just a colder version of it, and I think overall most parts of the country probably come away with a cold of an average month. That's the best I can do. If you finally just have a quick sneak peek at uh, March, so this is what uh, CFSV2 is showing for March 2018. It has an area of above average heights across central parts of Europe, below average heights in the Atlantic. Um, that looks much milder. That would be a very pleasant uh, situation. Uh, you'd have fair amount of dry weather and it would also be really quite a, a mild spring-like month there in March. However, CFSV2 looks like this and uh, still a blocking signal and generally that blocking is still being centred to the north of the UK. So you would still be expected to bring in a lot of easterly influences with that. So that could be a lot colder compared to the scenario that the uh, CFS V2 is um, going for. I think we worry about March when we get to it because we've got a lot to focus on between now and then. Uh, so because February 2018 forecast is for a slightly colder than average month. Expect... Um, Cold weather for the first week to 10 days, then probably a period of milder weather around the middle of the month, and then potentially our coldest spell of the month and of the winter occurring late on in the month. Uh, I think snowfall will come and go, but probably greater incidence of snow compared to average in most parts of the country, but a relatively dry month, as often happens uh, when it's cold. So we'll see how we get on and uh, that's it for the February 2018 month ahead forecast. Come back later on for the week ahead forecast and also of course after that maybe an update later on this afternoon or this evening. But that's all for now and thanks for watching.